Whether you're an aspiring doctor, a nurse, a pharmacist, a physiotherapist, getting your first health scope can be a daunting experience. In today's episode of Dr. Nora, I'll be taking you through which health scope I used to get me through medical school, GP training, and which scope I use today. Did you know that the stethoscope was invented back in 1816 in France, whereby originally it was a wooden tube where the practitioner would put their ear on one side and the patient's chest on the other? Now this changed a whole load of times, and back in the 1960s, David Lippmann, a doctor from Harvard University, created what we know today as the humble stethoscope, giving rise to the Lippmann. Have a seat, Mr. Patient. So I'm just going to have a listen to your heart sounds. Now, aside from being a fashion statement that you may see in TV shows such as Scrubs or House, stethoscopes actually surprisingly have a number of important uses. For example, they help us to check for someone's blood pressure. They also allow us to listen to the patient's lungs, listening if there's any infections or any fluid on the lungs as well. Not only that, but they allow you to hear the heart and seeing how the heart beats, giving rise to any murmurs. But not only that, it also allows us to listen to something called bruise, which is where the blood is passing through an artery which may be narrowed, giving a whooshing noise, which obviously is an abnormality that doctors need to act on. Now, let's take a look at the basics of a stethoscope. There are a lot of stethoscopes out there, and if you type in stethoscope into Google, you're probably going to end up with a whole load of different types, from your basic manual stethoscopes to electronic stethoscopes to ones that even record heart sounds. Yes, that is right. Technology today is crazy. There's another key. Oh, yeah. wow. That's oh, wow. <laughs> now, let's take a closer look at the stethoscope. The stethoscope that I've got today has two sides to it. One, you'll see, is smaller than the other. But why do we need to know the difference between the two? Well, the smaller side is known as the bell. This is useful to detect low frequency sounds, such as some heart murmurs or bowel sounds. The diaphragm, on the other hand, is useful to detect high frequency sounds, such as your normal lung sounds or even your normal heart sounds. So I'm using the diaphragm to listen to my heart. Yep, I'm still alive. <laughs> now. If I wanted to assess for murmurs, I can easily twist the tubing by 180 degrees until I hear a click, use the bell of the stethoscope to have a listen to the heart, and this usually is in the apex of the heart. Now, of course, you'd be doing this on a patient who had no clothing on. But I'm going to take you through which stethoscope brought me through medical school and what I use today in my general practice. Now, as a medical student, buying a stethoscope can be a pretty exciting experience. It's your rite of passage to wear it around your neck, going through the wards, thinking, yes, I've made it as a doctor. Well, we all know you're not really a doctor just yet, but five years, six years down the line, you will be. <laughs> now, when you're considering buying a stethoscope, you want to consider a few things. Firstly, is it within budget? Is it reliable and is it accurate? And more importantly, does it look good around your neck? I chose to opt for the Lippmann 2 Classic in the all black appearance, as you can see. I thought this was pretty awesome because it was well within my budget range and it also did exactly what I wanted it to do. Lean forward for me. And breathing in and out. Now I opted for the all black appearance, however you can go for a multitude of colours and you can even get a multicoloured rainbow effect stethoscope that I've seen online recently which is just awesome. But however, all good things must come to an end. And this stethoscope did only last me six years and with repeated use of it, the tubing did actually start to break, as you can see. Now, I unfortunately learnt this during a busy ward round on a respiratory ward with my consultant looking at me and asking me to listen to the patient's chest. So there I was, an astute medical student, putting my stethoscope inside of my ears, placing the, the diaphragm on the chest, please breathe in, breathe out, dead silent, absolutely nothing. I thought to myself, my ears are broken, I can't hear anything, what's going on? This lady has clearly, she's got a pneumonia, the consultant's right in front of me, what do I do? I'm really sorry, Dr. So-and-so, I can't hear anything. Red face, oh my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> After I had some time to come down, I had a good investigation with my stethoscope and I could clearly see that the tubing was broken. And I thought to myself, that was so embarrassing, I'm gonna have to go and buy myself a brand new stethoscope right now. Thank you. And it brings me on to my very trusty next stethoscope in life, which was the Lippmann Classic 3. Now this took me through GP training and it's what I use today. And in fact, it's so good that I even brought a spare one 
just in case so I don't get into a situation where my stethoscope breaks one day and uh, I've got a red face. <laughs> so taking a look at this one, this one is slightly larger in terms of the diaphragm, as you can see, and the bell is slightly different as well. It still has a dual action, so that still means you can twist the tubing to here from the bell and the diaphragm. And this one also comes with a free engraving. And as you can see, it has different colors. So I, I really like pink now, so I've chosen two shades of pink. I have to say, the main difference between the two and the three is, well, in my opinion, is the earpieces. The earpieces are super comfortable. It is like what a duck would feel when they're swimming on water. It feels so comfortable. It slots inside my ears very beautifully, and it gives you that really nice, crisp, clear audio as well. I have, however, encountered one issue with the stethoscope. Now, with repeated use and cleaning of the stethoscope, I did actually find that the membrane of the diaphragm actually became loose and it fell off. <sighs> Which was, to much my disappointment, because this does come in at around 160 Australian dollars. Yes, it comes with a five-year guarantee, but if you're the kind of person who wants to be hygienic and clean, just be mindful of the membrane. I did, in fact, contact Lipman and unfortunately this was not covered under the warranty so instead I had to fork out an additional 30 odd dollars to get myself a brand new membrane to cover. Now the Lipman Classic 3 is a great stethoscope. It's great for what I use on a day-to-day -day basis whereby I'm usually listening to a patient's chest, assessing for heart sounds, assessing for any chest infections and also listening to bowel sounds as well. However, I would not recommend it if you're looking for a more superior performance. For example, if you're a budding cardiologist, um, I would probably go for one of the more cardiology master classics in the Lipman series. If you're someone who just needs a reliable stethoscope, who needs to have comfort, who needs to have listened to general things, the basics such as heart sounds, lung sounds, bowel sounds, I would certainly recommend this, the Littman Classic 3. I'm very happy with it and inside the box also when you do buy it, you do also get some spare earpieces but you also get a ring that you can apply around your membrane cover if it is getting loose. But the only thing that doesn't come with is a spare membrane itself, which unfortunately you'd have to buy separately. Okay, so that rounds up my stethoscope review and what to get if you're looking for a new stethoscope. Let me know what you guys use in your day-to-day -day practice and which one you're considering. I hope you found this video useful and if you do have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy.